Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Nick Wilcox-Brown. I'm a photographer and a filmmaker. I've been doing this for uh, something north of 25 years. So I've been very fortunate to work for a lot of different people, shooting primarily editorial and advertising material. If you want to see me, you can find me on Mr. Photo on, uh, on Twitter or at The World Photographer, a slightly inappropriate misnomer, on uh, Facebook. Uh, because I offer wildlife photography and Lightroom training. So let's go into Lightroom CC now. So Lightroom CC is a brand new piece of software. It's new code from the ground up. Many people have asked me today about the difference between Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC is the new kid on the block. It's brand new code, it's fast, it's efficient, and it's quite nice looking. So as you can see on screen here, we've got a nice view of our images. Full screen, or if we hit the G key, we can actually see a more traditional thumbnail view. And as you'll see within the thumbnail view, we've got a few images, we've got some star ratings on them. Uh, that one's quite nice. We can put a pick on there if we wish to. If we don't like an image like that one, we can put an X on there to mark it for deletion. Or if we don't like our choice, we can simply hit the U key to undelete. As you can see, these are replicated down here. We've got the stars, so we can put an image there and we can put five stars on there. Traditional thumbnail view. Now, if we move across here to our folders, our My Photos area. Now, My Photos is quite nice. We've got all of our photos here. We've got a choice of recently added, and you can see the dates. Or if you want to actually choose images from specific dates, we can go into here or here in 2018, or we can go back to 2017. So you can see where your images were shot, where they've come from. Coming down to the albums, we've got a choice of folders, folder, or we can create a new folder here. And folders actually contain albums. So the demo folder here, as you can see, contains sets of albums, groups of pictures, which can be added automatically, or you can add them yourself. So this is a set of wildlife images from Scotland. And if we come down to set three, we've got a few travel images from Myanmar taken last November. But I'm going to work primarily today on the wildlife images to start with. And as you can see, we've got this view. And again, if I hit the G key, we've got a more full screen. And I will just delete the folder or hide the folder view. Now, of course, all these commands, I'm talking about keyboard commands, we've got them all here. We've got edit tools, and you can see all these little shortcuts, or we've got shortcuts of panels. We'll go through those in a moment. Now, this is an image I shot a couple of weeks ago. It's a heron comes up on screen. It's not a perfect image. It's not a bad image. But it's one that I shot on the grab. I was just about to put the gear away, and I saw this creature about to take off. So it doesn't look too bad, but it's not looking particularly great either. So what I'm going to do with it is do a quick edit on it. And as you can see, I hit the edit, and we've got these little panels down here, light, color, effects, detail, the sort of things you're familiar with from Lightroom standard, but in a nice new clean interface and faster, faster, faster than Lightroom standard. So well, this image will just do a little favorite of mine. I don't know how many of you have been using Lightroom standard for a while. The auto button was there, but it never really did very much. It tended to make images look too bright or too dark or something. If we hit this one here, it's not doing a great deal to this image, but it's making it technically correct. It's just making it a little bit brighter. It's bringing the shadows into line. It's just making it look respectable. So I like to tend to make my images look a little bit more interesting than this. So I'll click at Curve. We've got all the Curves tools here. Familiar tools. Add contrast. Too much contrast. Take it down a bit. We might want to bring the highlights down a little bit further. I'm sorry the screen image is looking a little bit too bright over there. Let's just bring the exposure down to match the screen image. There we are. Slightly more. And of course, we can then go down to panels. Now, I'm using this in what's called single panel mode. 
For those of you using Lightroom Classic, you can also use single panel mode. It just keeps everything nice and tidy. Now I'm just going to make this image just a touch more blue because it was an evening picture. And do we need a bit of sharpening? I think we need some sharpening, so we'll go into detail. And we've got, in Lightroom CC, we've got a full set of tools. It may look a little bit simple in its interface, but it's actually a very powerful piece of software. It's close to equaling Lightroom CC in terms of its functionality. And we've got the sharpening, the radius, all this stuff here. Now, people are going to say to me, and have said to me earlier on on the stand, do we need, do we need internet connectivity? We do need internet connectivity to ingest the images. If we were to go here, we can then choose. I haven't got a compact flash card because the Wi-Fi is quite poor here. But normally, I'll bring a, wi a compact flash card. I'll plug it in, and we'll ingest the images. Now, those images are then pulled into the laptop or into the computer or into a phone or a tablet. They're then uploaded to the cloud. They're backed up for you. You haven't got to think about backup. They are backed up for you. Once they're into the cloud and securely synchronized, and if you see on the top right here, all synced and backed up. Poor syncing. There we are. All synced and backed up. Once the files are synchronized and backed up, the cloud actually generates smart previews for you. Smart previews are basically full screen images or full screen versions of your image that are a fraction of the size of the original file. These are the files that then get synchronized down to your tablet or your phone. So if I just quickly go back into that set of images, same set of images on an iPad. If I have my phone here, I'll have the same set of images on the phone. If you're an Apple user, you can also have the same set of images on an Apple TV. And of course, if you've got an Android, you'll also have those same set of images. So it works cross-platform on any platform that will support the software. So upload once, download smart previews onto your, onto your device, and then you can do the corrections. If you've got internet connectivity, those changes will synchronize back immediately to your original files in the cloud. If you haven't, they will all store up and store up and then synchronize back when you have got internet connectivity. So it's a very nice way of working, and it means that your files are automatically backed up. Uh, someone's also said to me, slow internet, is that a problem? No, because if you ingest your files, they will gradually upload. They're not going to suddenly whoosh up and take all your internet connectivity. They will synchronize slowly in the background over a few hours, and so you don't swamp your internet connection. You can still use it for other things as well. Right, let's just go back into the software and take a further look at some of these images. We'll come out of that one and we'll look at... Anyone heard of the dehaze filter? Yep, the dehaze filter has come to Lightroom Classic a while back, but it's not been very much explained. It's on Lightroom CC as well, and it does exactly what it says. It dehazes images. So this is an image I shot in a snowstorm. In fact, I call this image Beast from the East because <laughs> this was shot as the beast was approaching northern Scotland. And it's literally a blizzard coming in. Now, if we use the conventional tools, let me just show you what the conventional tools do to this. We'll go into the, my favorite auto tool and see what it does. Well, actually on that screen, it's not looking too bad. On my, on my calibrated laptop, it's actually looking a bit dark and a bit gloomy, but it's not too bad. But I'm going to undo that, and I'm just going to put a little bit of tr curve tool on there and see how we get on with the curve tool. You can see it's not really doing very much, is it? So we'll undo that one again. In fact, we'll reset the curves, reset all channels, and we'll just try the effects tool. I want to go to there, and we'll go into effects. Now, this is the dehaze tool. Now, it's looking a little bit much. It's quite hard to judge. My screen doesn't match that one quite. But you can see that dehaze is really starting to bring some detail of that image. 
if we now go back into the curve as well, and we'll leave the highlights where they are and just bring the midtones down a little bit further, you can see the effects of the curve store here. So dehaze is very nice and very useful for such images. If I want to do more with that image, I can actually play further. We've got what's called a linear gradient. You probably all know the gradient filter. It's equivalent to using a leaf filter on your skies. I'm bringing the, dragging it down, and I'm holding the shift key to keep it straight. If I don't keep it shift key on, it goes all over the place. If I keep the shift key, it locks in and holds it there. Now, at the moment, you can't really see the effect of that. But if I hit the O key, or in fact, if we go across here, and we go view, and we go edit tools, show overlay, you can see what I've just done, the O key. So that's showing the overlay and it will show the effect of the tool I'm going to use. And what I'll do is actually bring the highlights down a bit further on that one. I may even bring the exposure down just a little bit for the sky. Whoops, too much. And there's a little bit too much saturation. OK. Right, so that is the dehaze tool and related. I'm going to go back into view, and I'm going to uh, go back into the photo grid again. And in fact, I'm going to go into the photo grid again because I want that one. Right. Anyone ever heard of split toning? Know what split toning does? Let me just show you a split toning. Grab this image, and if I hit the D key or double click on it, or hit the E for edit key on there, I can add this. And we'll go into the Effects tab again. And we'll add some color, shadows. I'm going to drag the shadows, and I'm going to make them a little bit blue. I can make them very blue or just a little bit blue. And the highlights, I want to look a little bit yellowish. Now, the image itself is almost monochrome. But adding this and we can make it blue. This is filter here. You can see in the middle the split toning slider. I'm now changing the ratio between shadows and highlights. But it does give quite a nice tone to the image. But also, split toning can be used for other images. It's not supposed to be, but it can actually be quite a useful way to color correct an image. And we'll do the same again here very quickly into effects and split toning. I'm going to have that blue, but I actually want the pink is not really quite showing through as I want it to too much. Drag it down, it cuts the saturation down almost to zero. And I actually want those sky highlights to be going to a slightly orangey red. There we are. So I'm actually using this here as a, effectively as a color correction tool for a color image, as opposed to just a toning. It works very well for that. Now, a duck. Some bird watchers would actually get quite excited about this duck. It's um, not your usual duck. Anyway, let's uh, just do a little bit of the work on this. So the first thing, in fact, I'm going to hit that. I'm just going to do the auto settings on this. There we are. Just brings a little bit of saturation in there. Makes it look quite nice. Now, I shot this with rather long lens, and it really could do with a little bit of a crop on it. So we're just going to drag a crop in there. Aspect ratio original, and I have to make sure the padlock is unchecked. Let's drag that to about there. Now, the reason for showing you this, I want to look at the sharpening. Sharpening is something that's overlooked by an awful lot of people, but it's very important. <coughs> that's not me, I don't think. Certainly not making that noise anyway. Bring in the detail. Right, sharpening. Now that's looking very grainy on there. We've got no noise reduction. And we've also got, as you can see, radius. If I bring the radius back, it wants to be down to about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 for this camera. This is shot on a Canon EOS 1DX. Mark II, and it's quite a clean camera. It doesn't have too much noise, but the ISO is reasonably high. Bring a bit of noise reduction. And something that a lot of people don't use, we can use the masking tool to cut the effect 
of the sharpening on noise. And we've got a much cleaner looking image. Now, if I go in here, down to the bottom here, got before and after. Now, OK, so we'll leave that on. Right, <clears throat> now, rather than just bore everybody with wildlife images, I will show you a set of some travel images. And we'll just come into set four. Now, these shots were done in, say, in Myanmar. Uh, we're using a little, tiny, little uh, micro four thirds camera, which is a bit noisy. But it does work quite well. Now, the first thing first, of course, is to use the auto to see what's going to happen with this. And it makes the image look much nicer straight off. And you can see lots of detail in there. So very quickly go into the Detail tab and just add a little bit of sharpening, a bit of noise reduction, make it look respectable. I did say it was a noisy camera. And we need to take the radius back and bring some masking in. As you can see, as you take masking further and further across, it cuts it out, but it also makes the image slightly blurred. So masking is a very useful tool to use for your images, but be quite selective. I tend to find 30 to 40 is about as far as it wants to go. And this screen is actually magnifying up the noise more than necessarily a laptop or a desktop screen is going to do. Now, as I'm making these changes, at the moment, I'm not very internet connected, I'm afraid. But if I make these changes, we will get an automatic sync, and the files will change across onto the iPad. Let's just bring up set four. And we have that image. And the image, and those changes have synced across here. Now, if I wish to do it, I can't plug it in today. But if you wish to do it, you can do those changes on here. You've got the same set of controls on the iPad or on the phone. So it's a very nice way to work with Lightroom CC. Now, one of the little tricks I did want to show you, <clears throat> this is as it was shot. I grabbed it a little bit casually. It wasn't shot very carefully. And there's some lovely tools in here to do, these to do changes to these images. The geometry tool. The geometry tool has been in Classic for a little while, but it's coming to Lightroom CC. And we've got an auto setting. And it's just making that image technically correct immediately with one simple click. Now, if we just take this and make the image a little bit more finished, I'm just going to bring in that one across there. And we've got an image that really does look quite finished. Just bring those highlights down a little bit further. And we'll go into the color to bring up the saturation and vibrance. Now, here's a question. Anyone knows the difference between saturation and vibrance? Does it confuse people? A lot of people actually ask, which is which? If I, these are both set to 0 at the moment. If I take the saturation slider, and just move it hard to the right, every single color in that image is being increased in saturation, which is sometimes good. But for an image like this, where there's a lot of saturation in the gold, it's not very nice. So I'm going to double click on that one and take it all out. If, on the other hand, I use the vibrance slider, you'll find that it's only bringing saturation up in parts of the image that are not fully saturated or not saturated. So you'll see the monks habits are coming up, whereas this has only changed very slightly. So if you have the choice and you need to bring image saturation up, use the vibrance slider first. See how it works before you start playing with the saturation slider. Now, another important one to mention is the optics. Now, this, actu this image has actually got a built-in lens profile applied because it's a micro four thirds. And part of the micro four thirds brief was that all images are automatically corrected for lens, color, uh, for lens distortion. If I was to use a Canon, a Nikon, or many of the other cameras, 
you just need to check these boxes here. And in fact, if we go back to quickly just dive back into a landscape image, I will just show you what it, difference it makes. Uh, let's go into that set there. Set two. Uh, let's go into our bunny. This is a mountain hare that was shot by photographically not shot by a shooter last week. And if we go into here and we apply those changes, it's very subtle. Can you see the changes? With a, long, with a shorter lens, you'll see much more change on the image. Uh, that's a much wider image. And if we make those changes with lens calibrations here, it does make quite a difference. So very important thing to do straight off with your images. Right, we're back in here. Actually, this is an image I'd like to show off. Show it. It looks pretty flat, doesn't it? It doesn't look very exciting. But I know that when I shot this, it looked much nicer. So if I hit the auto button on there, it really does look much nicer. But look to the right of the image. There's a bit of light in the sky. Now, it's not obvious from the picture, but I know full well that that's actually the remainder of the sunset. So I'm now going to hit this one here. This is the linear gradient. It's like using an ND filter or a sunset filter. And if I simply drag across there at the moment, keeping my shift key, you'll see it's making it darker. Well, I don't want the darkness. I'll just take those bits out. But what I actually do want is to bring up the sunset or the remainder of the sunset. Now, that's not coming across perfectly on there. Let's bring the saturation in. Now, this is how I shot the image. This is how it looked to me when I was shooting the camera. We've actually got the saturation. We've got a sunset over to the right of the image, and we've got the blue over to the left. Now, something I do a lot with my images, I'm going to do the L key again. I'm going to bring a linear gradient, or we can come up here to View, Edit Panels, Edit Tools, Linear Gradient, or we've got a radial gradient. But we'll use the linear gradient. I'm going to drag once more across from here. It's holding the settings from previously, so we'll just reset that one, double click. And I actually do want a little exposure change on here. I want about a third of a stop across here. And it just starts to level the image. Now, at the moment, I can't see exactly what's going on. So if I go into those edit tools again, show overlay, and there I can see my tool. And I can see exactly what it's doing. And what I'm actually going to do is hit the zero. There we are. I'm going to drag it across so they match. They actually come across the image. And that now brings that darkness very, very gradually across the image. If I do the same again from the other side, that sunset will extend much more, excuse me, much more naturally across the image. Hello, come on. It's not going to want to work here. There we are. That's the one I wanted there. That's the original one. And I actually want that one to go right across there. So the sunset across extends across. Right. We've gone through all this. How do you get your pictures out of Lightroom? At the moment, the controls are a little bit limited. We've got an option to send our images straight to Facebook. It works very nicely. Or we've got our choices of ex exporting to either a JPEG, it's a very high quality JPEG, or we can do the original plus settings. So if you want to take your pictures into Photoshop and do serious manipulation work, we go original plus settings, it will create a DNG file on your desktop. And that will export. Alternatively, another way of working is to go into here. If I want to do this in Photoshop, I can go file, edit in Photoshop, and that will take a full quality PSD file with all the color information into Photoshop. Make the changes in Photoshop, add the manipulations, anything you want to do that's more sophisticated than this, and press the Save button. It comes back into Lightroom CC. Now let me just come out of here a moment. Let's just choose a different image. I'll apply those. Come out of here. Right. We have somewhere here a little bird, which I'd like to show you. And little bird should be in set one. 
all my photos. Now, someone said to me earlier on, we've got to go into Photoshop to make changes to an image. <clears throat> this is a rather lovely little snow bunting. And it's a snow bunting on top of the Cairngorms, and it's rather cold. And the snow bunting as well, I'm not sure that's a snow bunting poo, but it's something similar. And we don't really want that in our picture. So what we can do is we can actually do some editing in here. We've got a healing tool. So we can actually go heal and we can take that and we can just do a little bit of work. And it's not a perfect job, but actually you can't really see the original problem. We can just take that little bit of mess out of there and again it brings it in. So we can do a lot of our work in Lightroom CC. If we want to take it into Photoshop to do, start to do more sophisticated changes, like this one here, if I do this patch on this bird here, it may not give us the best result. It's not bad. It's not bad, it's actually healed that. If you start to look at that very closely, you might want to do a little bit more work on there than that, if you're being very fastidious. In which case, we want to go into edit in Photoshop. But if you don't need anything more sophisticated than that, the healing tool in Lightroom CC actually works very well. And, and what I will tend to do on that one is just crop that, a little bit of crop to take out the muck at the bottom. Okay, I'm cutting the tail off. We've now got a near-perfect picture without going into Photoshop. <laughs>